Hey, Chipstock investors, welcome back. Happy Friday. Thank you to all of our new subscribers and for the subscribers who've been with us from the very beginning. We just crossed 3,000 subs. Here's to 10,000 by the end of the year. Thank you so much. Let's keep it rolling. Today, we just headed out into an ocean of earnings this week, so we'll be trying to sift through all of them and bring you some key points and relevant information in the coming weeks from some of our favorite companies. Today, we're going to be covering ASML and Taiwan Semiconductor, but first, we're going to be briefly discussing Tesla and a few specific things that were said during the quarterly earnings call about NVIDIA. So please stay tuned for the whole episode. You're going to get some great information. Nick, give us a quick breakdown of Tesla's quarterly earnings. Casey, at this point, I think everybody that wanted to know about Tesla earnings probably already knows the numbers. And this is a battleground stock that we find people already have their minds made up on by and large if they like it. And if they don't like it, they don't like it. And you really can't disagree with them on that. So rather than talk about the earnings numbers and whether or not it was good or bad, I think I'll just say this. Earlier this year, you and I came up with this thesis that there was going to be an electric vehicle price war. All of these traditional automakers in particular coming to market finally with EV models and mass. And so naturally Tesla's market share is going to decrease from roughly around close to 100% down to something more reasonable. It's easy to have most of the market share when you're more or less the only game in town. That's no longer the case, but Tesla was going to start and win a price war. And I think that is what a lot of investors focused in on was because in large part due to Tesla cutting prices on some of its top models, the operating profit margin has sunk from something around 14, 15% a year ago down to just under 10% this quarter. But I think here's one point a lot of investors, both bullish and bearish investors missed. The Average selling price per vehicle is not the only reason profit margins shrunk this quarter. Tesla is ramping up production to support a lot of new models. The Cybertruck, supposedly this Model 2, this affordable mass market EV that they've been working on. And also foreign currency exchange rates are still a big headwind. The US dollar strength has been coming down as, again, as we predicted in January, link to that video here if you're interested in learning about what effect that has on stocks, their revenues and profit margins for businesses. So all of these various headwinds working against Tesla here that actually will turn into a tailwind eventually. And then Casey, I think the big thing here also, in addition to this, Tesla spending a lot of money on data center AI chips. And we'll also put a link to the article we wrote about that just a couple of weeks ago about the battle between NVIDIA and Tesla. And Elon Musk had some high praise for NVIDIA and maybe something that came as a bit of surprise to many, ourselves included. Do you want to drop that quote for us, Casey? Yes. In the earnings call, Elon Musk said, we're using a lot of NVIDIA hardware. We'll continue to use, we'll actually take NVIDIA hardware as fast as NVIDIA will deliver it to us. They've done an incredible job. And frankly, I don't know if they could deliver us, if they could deliver us enough GPUs, we might not need Do Dojo, but they can't. What it sounds like here, Nick, is that if NVIDIA was able to provide all the chips that Tesla needed, they wouldn't even pursue this Dojo system. Is that the way to understand this? I don't know. Dojo was announced a couple of years ago now. Tesla said that they designed their own AI training chip. Of course, this all feeds into primarily the full self-driving system and getting it trained and up to snuff. We were part of the FSD beta program there for a while and some really cool stuff about it and obviously some areas where it was severely lacking. So they need AI training. I think they were going to build Dojo no matter what, because I think Tesla would eventually like to offer Dojo to other automakers to train their own self-driving AI algorithms. That being said, I think what this really sounds like to me is 
much like has happened in the cloud computing market and in data centers in general is NVIDIA's hardware is just so good that everybody needs it now if you want to keep pace with the times. So I think really that's probably the admission here. Yes, Tesla developed its own AI training chip, but NVIDIA is really just that good at this point. Overall, Tesla is a very ambitious company. The earnings transcript is very interesting and full of a lot of opportunity for growth. We can see that Tesla is in a transition period. The global economy is definitely not helping this company, but still they pulled off a very solid quarter. We'll circle back to NVIDIA a little bit more when we talk about TSMC here in a few moments. Let's run through some of the numbers for ASML. Net sales, 6.9 billion euros. Net system sales, 5.6 billion. Gross margin, 51%. Operating margin, nearly 33%. Earnings per share of 4 euro 93 cents and net bookings of 4.5 billion euros, which is including EUV bookings of 1.6 billion euros. And I'll just briefly mention what the expectations were for this quarter. They expected net sales to be between 6.5 billion and 7 billion euros. So they were at the top end of their expectations and they expected their installed base management sales to be around 1.3 billion. And that's exactly what it was. Gross margin, they expected between 50 and 51 percent. Overall, the company's quarter was about as expected. Which is worth mentioning. As expected is pretty darn good, given that the semiconductor equipment industry overall is in a slump this year. ASML growing at a very fast pace. I think we need to talk about this, though, Casey, because, of course, the worry has resurfaced once again. This is a really horrible record that has been on repeat now for four years, five years. But it sounds the U.S. readying more chip and advanced equipment export curbs to China. Despite this, ASML reported great numbers and actually increased their guidance for full year 2023. So total revenue for 2023 is now expected to be up 30% year over year. Previously, they were expecting 25% growth. And you pair that with the gross margin and operating profit margin expansion that is still anticipated. Remember, this is a manufacturing company. They build out the capacity for that manufacturing. And as that capacity fills up, you get profit margin bump. This is a business that could be growing its earnings close to 40% this year in spite of possible export curbs getting ratcheted up again sometime this summer. A little bit more about the restrictions on China sales. CEO Peter Winnick said that sales of ASML's EUV tools have already been restricted, and the business in China is predominantly focused on mature and mid-critical nodes. The new Dutch export regulations will come into effect on September 1, 2023. There were also some reports in the media recently about additional U.S. export controls. Of course, we will and cannot respond to speculation. However, based on our current understanding, we do not expect to change our previously communicated view. Therefore, based on everything we have been made aware of as of today, we do not expect the Dutch and potential additional U.S. majors to have a material impact on our financial outlook for 2023, nor on our longer-term scenarios as communicated during our Investor Day in November last year. In, in other words, the news media is a horrible resource for you if you are a long-term investor. If you're an ASML shareholder, I think the CEO is saying here, everyone, chill out. We've been dealing with these export restrictions for a while. We can deal with it. And it's also at this point, a lot of speculation. We don't know what any new export curbs are going to be, if any are announced at all. We are not political policymaker experts, nor do we want to be, but we do know a lot of chip companies are saying right now at this point, hey, there have been enough export controls. Let's maybe try to figure out how we can all get along. For obvious reasons, 
at this point, though, I don't think this is any particular reason to panic. Regarding the outlook for ASML, there were some questions about what will happen in 2024 and the backlog of purchase orders that ASML has. Management said that 2024 is not fully covered by purchase orders yet, but they do expect firm demand. And in 2025, ASML expects that the new fabs that are being constructed will need new equipment from companies like ASML. As we've talked about in recent videos, Casey, about this chip fab construction boom, this is really unprecedented for the industry. Governments all over the world funneling lots of cash to bring chip fabs to their shores. For whatever reason, geopolitical reasons or supply chain concerns, whatever. So lots of investment dollars getting pushed into these things. So 2024, ASML not willing to give a specific outlook yet. It looks like that backlog, which was a nice bump, as you mentioned, 4.5 billion euros up 700 million quarter over quarter, still only covers them for roughly the first half of 2024. Purchase orders are expected to start rolling in, though, at some point, because no one that is no one involved with manufacturing the most advanced chips, TSMC, Samsung, Intel, no one wants to get left behind. So as those new fabs get built and start coming online in 2025, they're going to get filled up. Also, an interesting point here, some of the new equipment from ASML, some of the newest extreme ultraviolet EUV machines. We've been saying here for the last few quarters, ASML's average selling price on those EUV machines approaching 200 million euro each piece of equipment. By 2024 and 2025, the average selling price for many of these are going to be north of 200 million euro a pop. The company has plenty of growth tailwinds propelling it forward. Out of the four companies we're talking about today during earnings season, this is, I think, our favorite right now. Let's talk about valuation. Year to date, this company is up 20%. Are we still at a fair value, Nick? What do you think the fair value of this company is and what is the valuation? So after Q2 earnings, ASML trading for a fairly hefty premium, roughly 34 times trailing 12-month earnings per share. But based on Wall Street's 2024 expectations, only about 27 times earnings, it's probably too soon to say, but basically the market factoring in for something like mid-teens to 20% earnings per share growth, which is basically what the long-term average is for ASML. I don't think it's an unreasonable expectation. 2025 could be an especially strong year as all these new fabs start to come online and get filled up with this equipment, like you were mentioning, Casey. So when we were buying ASML stock in earnest this time, nine, 10 months ago, it was an unbelievably cheap stock, like an almost too good to be true deal. Since then, it's up over 80%, as you said, over 20% so far this year. When we did our six-month chip stock investor review a few months back, we said the first six months were almost kind of easy because all chip stocks went up in tandem because they were too cheap. The market sold them off way too hard through last October, last November. And so the first six months, all chip stocks rallied, but we said in our six-month review, things were going to be harder going forward. This is where the secular leaders for the next bull market will start to differentiate themselves. And we think ASML is most certainly one of those secular leaders. So whether you believe in chip manufacturing leadership remaining the status quo with TSMC and Samsung remaining on top, you want to own ASML. If you believe in a massive Intel turnaround story, you're going to need ASML. If you believe NVIDIA continues to dominate the data center and AI compute and computing acceleration market that is just now emerging, you need ASML. I think you start to get the picture here. This company is a secular leader for the 2020s and it's fair value now. It's not cheap like it was, but at least by our estimations, we think fair value, but a wonderful company that we want in our portfolio for the long term. Let's move on to Taiwan Semiconductor. I'll run briefly through the 
Q2 2023 numbers here. We have a net revenue of over 15 billion, gross margin 54%, operating margin at 42%. And earnings per share of $7.01. Solid quarter for TSM. Also write about their expectations. But there are a couple of things during the earnings call. They mentioned about the upcoming year and the delay in rebound that was expected initially. Let's talk a little bit more about that, Nick. And you can tell us what you saw in the earnings call. Yeah, this was TSMC's first year-over-year revenue decline since pre-pandemic. Absolutely incredible run for this company. And we expect TSMC is going to remain the world's largest and most important semiconductor manufacturing third-party foundry through the duration of the 2020s. I'll repeat that because I know there's a ton of geopolitical risk out there, but at, at the end of the day, We still think TSMC will remain the world's largest and most important third-party foundry at the end of this decade. That being said, we are in the midst of a slump, and this slump is continuing to take longer than everyone expected. So what was previously guided to be a roughly flat year for TSMC's revenue is now expected to be a 10% decline. And of course, Casey, those numbers you rattled off were in Taiwanese dollars. So this is excluding exchange rates into U.S. dollars or euro or whichever currency you use in your home market. Casey, you pulled the slides from TSMC's earnings presentation. So you can see here this first one, the revenue by technology. And in the blue and the red, seven nanometers and below. So seven nanometer, five nanometer, and then the quickly ramping up three nanometer, the most advanced technology, actually in decline off of the peaks in Q3 and Q4 of last year. Here's what's going on. This next slide here, revenue by platform. You can see the growth rates dipping for the two largest segments, high-performance compute. Basically, that's data center, the cloud, AI, chips from NVIDIA, and then smartphone. Those are the two most important segments for TSMC, both in sequential decline. And what's happening here is there's just too much inventory. So this is another broken record that we keep having to replay quarter after quarter now since the second half of 2022. But Remember the chip shortage in 2020 and 2021, companies tried to ramp up their production to meet demand during the chip shortage, just in time for consumer spending on electronics, mainly PCs, laptops, and smartphones fell off a cliff last year. And now there's all this excess inventory that needs to be worked down. So TSMC slowing down their new wafer starts and their manufacturing lines to try to help their customers manage that excess inventory. Previously, the prediction from TSMC and basically everybody in the industry was that the bottom for this market was going to be right now, the end of Q2, summer of 2023. And it looks like that is now being pushed off three to six months. There's still too much inventory specifically in smartphones and PCs. And so now TSMC is saying maybe by the fourth quarter, Maybe even the start of 2024 will have the bottom in. Inventories will be back at healthy levels. So more patience is going to be required here for TSMC and for all of the companies that use TSMC to manufacture their wafers and package their chips. You can see this illustrated in a chart Nick made for the last earnings report. It was expected that By mid-2023, we would start to see a rebound, but now, as illustrated in this next slide, the rebound is now expected in 2024. Now, Casey, I want to reference another slide that you had made earlier this year about TSMC's plans to diversify its geographical mix. So presently, right now, almost all of their advanced chip making, really all of their chip making, for that matter, is in Taiwan. And everybody knows about the geopolitical risks, the overtures China has been making towards Taiwan. 
And so Taiwan really getting pushed to diversify into the US, into Europe, in Japan, so on and so forth. On the earnings call, TSMC said they are having to delay that giant Arizona fab. It's now not expected to ramp up until 2025 versus originally planned in 2024. Does this slide that you made still hold true? Yes, the CEO did speak about this specific problem in Arizona in the earnings call. He said they started the construction in April 2021 with a very aggressive schedule. They were planning on having it up and running by 2024. However, he said they're encountering certain challenges as there is an insufficient amount of skilled workers with those specialized expertise required for equipment installation in a semiconductor grade facility. While we are working on improving the situation, including sending experienced technicians from Taiwan to train the local skilled workers for a short period of time, we expect the production of N4 process technology to be pushed out to 2025. So they still plan on having this fabrication facility up and running by 2025. And by 2027, their portfolio or their manufacturing process to be more diversely located outside of Taiwan by 2027, as you can see by this chart. Casey, maybe just one last thing we can pivot to here, because we we already talked about NVIDIA in relation to Tesla's earnings. And NVIDIA, of course, came up again during TSMC's earnings, which really just speaks to the strengths of NVIDIA right now and how it has become a secular leader, if not the secular leader of this new bull market that is emerging. TSMC was asked about their AI-specific chips and what that was going to do to their overall revenue base. And what's happening right now is they have seen a massive surge in AI chip demand, specifically for the data center, specifically for AI training. When most of the time here, when you hear the word AI thrown around, what people are talking about is generative AI, things like chat GPT, training AI systems and services like that. Lots of other AIs out there that are also pushing demand. So just bear that in mind here. What's being referred to is generative AI training, which is a market almost completely dominated by NVIDIA. So another quote here from TSMC's CEO, today, server AI processor demand, which we define as CPUs, GPUs, and AI accelerators that are performing training and inference functions account for approximately 6% of TSMC's total revenue. We forecasted this to grow at close to 50% CAGR, compound annual growth rate, in the next five years, and to increase to a low teens percentage of our revenue. So remember that high-performance compute is basically all things cloud and AI. And so now just this new generative AI market is expected to be a low teens percentage portion of TSMT's total revenue in just five years. This is absolutely incredible. All sorts of talk about NVIDIA right now. Is it in a bubble? Is it going to crash? When does this hype cycle come to an end? We don't know, but TSMC is just the latest company to come out and say, you know what? This is actually not going to fade quickly. NVIDIA has absolutely leveled the playing field and everybody needs NVIDIA chips. And there's really no good competitor. There's no real good second place option out there with the exception of maybe AMD. And they just don't have the software yet, especially not a cloud-based subscription service like NVIDIA does. To go along with what you just mentioned, Nick, there was a question from one of the analysts basically asking, do you think AI demand is a real thing? It's funny because we've been discussing this as well. Is this just hype? But management said they can't necessarily predict exactly what the demand will be, if it'll continue to raise or it will flatten out. But their model is based on the data center structure. And they are assuming that a certain percentage of the data center processors are AI processors. And so based on that, they can calculate the general AI processor demand. And so, as you said, these data centers will need these 
highly complex chips placed in them for things like generative AI. TSM is definitely well positioned for this type of production. What does this mean for TSMC and for investors? Should this stock be part of your portfolio? This is very bullish for TSMC. Yes, they're going through a rough patch right at the moment. It finally caught up with them. They were able to bridge some of the semiconductor industry pain, and now they're getting hit as well. Again, 10% expected revenue decline in 2023 before things rebound again in 2024. In the grand scheme of things, though, this is a very shallow pothole. And this company has done an incredibly amazing job at managing the last few years' ups and downs. I think TSMC comes out an even stronger business than before. But going back to our ASML bit, Casey, it doesn't matter if you like TSMC or Samsung or Intel or Micron, the absolutely ugly, horrific looking memory chip market right now. All of these companies need ASML equipment to continue to progress their chip manufacturing technology. So for us personally, ASML is our bet. TSMC, this is one of the primary reasons that we've been patient and sitting by idly watching. We had the Warren Buffett hype when they like bought TSMC stock and then promptly sold it a few months later because they like somehow missed that China presented some geopolitical risk to TSM. And then investors, ha- I think we have hyper-focused on China as a risk, which we think is maybe at this point, maybe overemphasized a bit. And now it's like everybody had forgotten that, hey, China is not just the only risk TSMC has to contend with. You actually have the ups and downs of the semiconductor industry as well. Everyone just got reminded of that. I think some patience here would be wise. If you like chip fab businesses, TSMC isn't just the company with the most to lose. They still have a lot to gain in the next five to 10 years as advanced chip making continues to just trudge on. When we were talking about Tesla, you mentioned that we would circle back to NVIDIA during this part of our show. What does all of this mean for NVIDIA? Casey, we're certainly not going to go out and buy more NVIDIA stock at this point. It's already our largest position by far, but we're certainly not going to sell any of it either. Yes, the stock looks ridiculously expensive, but I think if you actually do some digging into the growth potential for the business over the next five years, like what TSMC was alluding to here with just the AI, generative AI market alone, accounting for something like upwards of 50% Kager, that's an annual average for the next five years, just from one market. I think you start to get a sense of why the market has driven NVIDIA stock up. When we did our valuation video on NVIDIA, link to that here because I think that information is still accurate and up to date until NVIDIA gives us another quarterly update later on this earnings season. We had said we thought NVIDIA stock would charge towards upwards of $500 per share. And that has indeed taken place because if you actually do the work, do the homework, pencil in what NVIDIA's expected growth is over the next five years, do a high and a low, and then maybe take an average of that This company has some really incredible long-term secular growth drivers pushing it forward. It was cheap in 2022. This is so ironic, Casey. We've been NVIDIA shareholders for a long time. When we were last buying the stock in 2022, because it was cheap, it was on a forward-looking basis, it was dirt cheap. Everyone was telling us, you're crazy. Why are you buying this? It's expensive. NVIDIA stock now up over 200% just so far in 2023. And everyone is still saying it's expensive. Now, I think we probably agree at this particular point in time. Yes, maybe it's expensive now, but you can't call stocks expensive on a backwards looking basis. You have to do your homework and you have to look and try to figure out what the forward growth expectations are. You're going to be wrong. We all are when you do forward looking assumptions to try to figure out the fair value of a stock, but you have to do that work. If you try to call a stock cheap or expensive based on the past, you are going to lose the long-term investing battle. End of rant on that. TSMC, fantastic company. It's on our watch list, but our bet is on ASML. That's our favorite stock 
right now, as of this moment for earnings season, NVIDIA certainly still don't sleep on that company doing amazing things. Tesla doing a pretty bang up job in spite of some pretty horrific macroeconomic issues, weakness in China, and TSMC still a really solid long-term, slower but steadier growth play. Okay. If you've stuck with us to the end of this episode, you get a bonus company. And it's one of Nick's favorites, so he can talk about it forever. But we're going to make this really brief. It's Qualcomm. Nick, what do you want to say about our bonus company, Qualcomm? Casey, all of these earnings reports are very interesting. We're getting some updated guidance here that indicate the bottom for the chip market is maybe not quite here yet. Maybe not until the fourth quarter of this year. Interestingly, though, several months ago, Qualcomm already told us this. And we did a couple of update videos on Qualcomm. And I think for good reason right now, Qualcomm stock is very depressed because they're still highly reliant on smartphones and Internet of Things devices, IoT devices. Of course, automotive growing very quickly, but smartphones, IoT, both down, as you can see from the TSMC slide. But Qualcomm already indicated this to us that, hey, the bottom for the chip market may be not going to happen until Q4 calendar year 2023. We still like Qualcomm, though, because they will work through the chip inventory issues. Maybe a stock you have to be exceptionally patient with, but you get something that's trading at depressed prices and the business is still highly profitable despite all of this craziness going on out there. There's your bonus stock for this Friday's edition of our episode. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and have notifications turned on so that you catch every video. Next week, we have Intuitive Surgical, Umbrella, and Quantum Psy, two small cap companies that we have not covered here at Chipstock Investor. Thanks, everyone. Have a safe weekend.